my name is Tanya Williams and I'm the founder and executive and artistic director of Real World Film Festival. The whole world knows about Tyler Perry Studios in Atlanta. Absolutely huge, big studios. He's investing, not just because it's, that's where he's from. He is building, he is the big cheese in Atlanta. And I think it's really fantastic what Tyler Perry has done. It may not be the direction that I would go. It, it doesn't have to be the direction you would go, by the way. You can admire from where he came, this is his dream. This is what he wanted to do and he manifested it. And you're talking about a guy who says he was living out of the back of his car. He was homeless for a while. So when you finally have that thing that people People want to hear he didn't have to worry about where the money was coming from after that the money flowed because he found it that's what you need to focus on what are you saying maybe what you're saying isn't what people want to hear maybe you're ahead of your time maybe you're behind your time keep finessing what it is you want to say because eventually people will go what, what was that what, that guy said something and it was really, really resonated. She, she said something, what, what just happened there? And they'll feel it, it's like a tingle. And then the money will come pouring. That's what happened with Drake. <laughs> I'm assuming. <laughs> Who was to be reckoned with in 1979, Tanya was one of the first black actresses to break into mainstream Canadian television. She's best known for her 20 year starring role as Dr. Olivia Barber Winters on the popular daytime drama, The Young and the Restless, which currently airs in over 60 countries. And international awards, including two NAACP Image Awards and the Actual Award of Excellence, Tanya Williams has been the founder and executive director of the Real World Film Festival and Real World Screen Institute since 2001. Listen to you give us an amazing speech. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for my mentor, Tanya. Uh, this feels really nice. You know what? I don't feel like I'm at this huge sort of event thing. I really feel like I'm. I feel like you guys. If, if we, if I lived in a Tyler Perry house, I feel like this is like you guys just coming over <laughs> for Saturday or something. It's really great to be here, and thank you so much, Julie Black. I, that was just phenomenal. I can't wait to see that musical and Maestro. You know, it's funny, I'm older than any of the other people up here, so I've watched their careers. <laughs> I'm 61. Do the, do the math. Everybody in this room watched Polka Dot Door, and you were all five, so do the math. <laughs> So I just wanted to hear a little bit more about what it is Real World and Tanya Williams are doing to make that a reality. Well, what's important to recognize too is that we're all in it together. So Real World is about all people of color. Mm -hmm. Because whether you're an indigenous person or an Asian or South Asian or a black person, we're all in this struggle together. In fact, I said when I started my career in the late 70s, it was just trying to get someone black on. But Asian and South Asian people weren't even there at all, and not for a long time. It was a good 10, 15 years before we even started seeing them on the screen from when black people started being there. So we're all all in this struggle together and I think real world is really about it's not just about the actors and the directors pioneers but it makes us feel good to know that whatever we were pioneering, you've just taken it to another level. And that does us proud. And just imagine, one day you'll be 61 talking to someone young too, and they'll have just taken it even further because of the steps that you take today. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate all of you give yourself a hand. <laughs> From Tanya herself. Growing up, I was almost always the only black person in the room, and I recognized that what I said and did every other eye in the room was going to cast on every other black person that they ever met after that point. So I took that. It can be a heavy burden, but it can also be a really positive thing. You have an opportunity to change people's opinions about who black people are. 
how they think, what they do, and that they're not one monolithic group of people that move in one monolithic way, that we're varied, that we're different, that we think differently, that we have different desires and you know, different wants, and that that's about, I think that's the future to me when I think about black history right now and I think about the future, is that we have to change the minds of the world in understanding that all black people are not one people. And I, I, I love being a part of that history. That's why Maestro said, you know, when I met him and I, and I spoke with him, I do that with everybody. In fact, I was just at the Crystal Awards this year and when I'm in a room, the first thing I do is I pick out all the black people and I just go over and introduce myself. It freaks them out, but I always do that. Um, and I've done that since the very beginning because I never used to see any black people. So if I go in a room and I saw one, how could you like not walk across the room and say, hi, black person, black person. <laughs> when I went to high school, I was usually the only black kid in all of my um, schools that I ever went to, and I went to schools in England where I was born and in Jamaica and in Canada, but when I hit high school there was one other black guy, Andy Cole, and I'm sure he was a great guy, but we couldn't be more mismatched and everyone in the school just decided that we should probably date because we were two black people. Even though he was like, you know, like a crazy party guy who like smoked pot and drank all the time and I was in the band and in classic music, I have no idea why they thought, you know, we'd be a good match other than the fact that we were black. But I met Andy Cole recently. It was great seeing him married and with his kids and we talked about that, how, yeah, we were supposed to end up together. <laughs> Tanya, you know you look real good for the age. That's why you said, I'm 61. You knew they would give you that applause. Give it up for 61. Thank you for all that inspiration throughout the years, man. All right, hello and welcome back. We're at the Real World Film Festival, and I am with the founder and the executive and artistic director. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to call you, because the last time I was with you, I sent a picture to my mom, and she freaked out. She's like, oh my gosh, Olivia! <laughs> I said, I hope one day I don't die, and that's on my grave. Oh gosh, yeah. Tanya oh, Olivia, Olivia oh, yes, Williams. Olivia on The Young and the Restless, Tanya Lee Williams. In there to fill a very important void in his life. And for that, I will always be truly grateful. But let's face facts. You are not the man I married. I don't know what you're talking about, Gisela. Girl, don't give me that. You know, Dad, I'm right well what I'm talking about. What are you accusing me of? For the life of me, I cannot figure out why a woman wouldn't want to go out with a man like Malcolm. Unless, of course... She has someone else in her life. Maybe I don't feel like being in love right now. No, I imagine not. Hey, how you doing? This is uh, DT the Artist. And right now I'm with the amazing Tanya Williams. And she's going to talk about her film festival because she's got a lot going on. So, Well, first of all, I'm like five foot eight. <laughs> and I'm sure I look like a midget, but this guy's like eight feet tall. So I'm a normal, I'm a normal height. So yes, I'm really glad to be here. And it's such a pleasure to finally meet you. Such a great talent. And I want to talk a little bit about Real World Film yes, Festival. Please. Real World. .ca, R -E -E -L world .ca. We're going into our 19th year. We're based here in Toronto. What's really fantastic is that Real World is the probably the only festival in Canada dedicated only to Canadian talent, Canadian BIPOC. And if you don't know what BIPOC is by now, you are so not in the loop of what's happening in Canada. That is black, indigenous, people of color, BIPOC people of which we are all all BIPOC people. So come out to Real World. Our festival is October 17th to the 21st. The schedule and tickets will all be up online at our website by September 13th. So we want you to come out, support Canadian talent. Don't just be supporting the international talent. We are Canadians. <laughs> now that means a lot just in, in you saying that, but what was the inspiration in creating that? Because there aren't too many things for just Canadians. The 
inspiration was I started my career in Canada in the late 70s when there was little to zero opportunity for people yes. of color. And then by the time I'd moved to LA and I ha was having my success there, I would come back to Toronto and the young people by then would be saying, how do I get to the US? Yes. And that was depressing because I understood there was little opportunity for me, but 20 years later there should have been more opportunity. Yep. So the cultivation back in 2001 to launch Real World Film Festival and Real World Screen Institute was to give us a platform here in Canada. And what I still find frustrating is 19 years later, even the BIPOC Canadian talent don't know about us. Yeah. They're more interested in the festivals that are screening international people. You need to focus on who's out there supporting you. <laughs> And it's, it's true that you say that because I'm always saying we got to support our own talent. So make sure you go to realworld.ca, get your tickets. Next year, if you're, if you're late, you know, send in a film then next year. But make sure you go this year. And remember, a film festival is never just about the films. As you know, just today yeah. we heard pitches and all kinds of things. So we have industry panels and all our industry panels, the people on the panels are only Canadian telling you how you get your work in, how you get financing, how you get distribution, how you get a sales agent. We have panels of how you become an entertainment lawyer, how you become a manager, how do you become a you know a, a hair person, a wardrobe person. We're talking about things that affect Canadians in the entertainment industry who are BIPOC Canadians. So it sounds amazing because it's not just films as you're saying. There's actual tangible skills. How, where do you go? How do you do it? Every film festival is. I don't even think there's a film festival ever. That it's just about screening. It's always about professional development and it's about the networking. How you meet. And networking is not a dirty word. It's just <laughs> meeting other people in the industry that you can eventually maybe build as part of your team. Mm -hmm. And that's crucial. Nobody does it alone. Remember when you're watching a movie or a television uh, a series? Look at the credits in the end. Yep. Count them up. There's like a thousand people there. Yes. It took all those people to make that one movie or that one television show show happen. Now before I let you go, what one piece of advice would you give to any budding filmmaker, actor, artist, anybody trying to get into the entertainment business? I'd say the one piece of most crucial advice is don't focus on the money. Don't focus on I gotta be rich, I gotta make a lot of money. That is not the focus because there's a lot of rich people in Hollywood that are very unhappy. Yeah. If that's going to be your focus then you might as well just focus on the money on any job. It doesn't have to be this one. Focus on the fact that if you want to be a filmmaker, if you want to tell stories, if you want to be in this industry, it means you have to believe in something. Yes. Whether it's about racial issues or social issues, whether it's environmental issues, I don't even actually care what the issues are. <laughs> as long as you're passionate first about an issue and then the rest of it falls into place. I'm not a wealthy person, I'm not a rich person, but I have a great life because yes. every day I'm living, I'm speaking to and I am wallowing in stuff that I love that's passionate. That's the legacy. When you're dead and gone, your legacy is really going to be how you impacted all the people around you. It's never going to be how much money you have. Thank you for the great advice. Make sure you guys go to Real World Festival. It's amazing. Thank you for just taking the time to speak to me. I'm DT The Artist. Stay tuned. Check it out, man. This is your boy Akon, and right now you got it locked to Worldwide Entertainment TV. Keep it locked.